This brand new tool in Resolve can take your cheap camera footage from this to that in seconds. Or how about creating those beautiful soft creamy edges from the Batman? This tool got you covered. In this video, I'm gonna take you through all the best practices with this particular tool. And after watching this video, you should be able to give your footage Hollywood-like quality. Speaking of Hollywood, this modern teal and orange look was created using Kazi's toolkit in minutes. Zero qualifiers were used. We are one week away from the launch, so this is your last chance to get 20% off plus early access by joining the waitlist. Link is in the description. Let's roll the intro. All right, so now we're inside Resolve and I'm gonna start off by creating this effect. So these soft, creamy edges that we see in the Batman. And obviously they did a lot of that in camera with practical effects, but we're gonna try to recreate that in post. So I'm gonna go ahead and look up this effect, defocus background, and I'm gonna drop that on. And when you drop it on, it doesn't do anything because it needs some sort of data through power windows, depth map, magic masks, stuff like that. So as soon as I go ahead and activate a window, like look what happens. So all of a sudden it's an effect and it looks beautiful. Uh, and we're gonna go through the options in a second, but this bokeh is out of this world, okay? This is believable as hell. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up a little bit, something like that. And then I'm gonna just turn the window like this a little bit and maybe stretch it out just a tiny bit pull it down just a little bit like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and feather it quite a bit. So maybe something like that because we want the fall off to be very soft and that's what's going to sell the effect. So let's hide the window and look at it. This looks so good, but you know, like this kind of effect, we can make it better. All right, so now let's go through some of these features. So the blur, you can enhance the blur, you can exaggerate the blur or you can dial back the blur, right? So like even if we do something like that, is still very cool, but it's a lot more believable. And then saturation, as it says, like you can see, like we can control and create a fall off of the saturation. And these are the tools that makes this so much more powerful than say just applying a regular blur. If anybody that's thinking like, oh, genius, like I can just apply a blur and it could be the same, but just wait as we move forward and I show you other features in here. So colorize is pretty sick because you can literally create split toning out of nowhere like just out of thin air, you can just create split toning, right? Or you can use it how I use it by giving it a dark color and then it just basically becomes like a vignette. Like, look at that. So that is pretty freaking cool. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere around here because if we see this, the edges do get pretty dark. Like, look at this, the edges get pretty dark, right? And the thing that's going to really sell this effect is this guy right here. So you have a couple of uh, blur types and obviously we don't wanna do Gaussian because that's just gonna be a regular blur. This is what makes this tool so special. And then once you go in here, if you want an amorphic effect, like look at this. So by the way, I'm gonna go ahead and just like reset my blur so we can actually see this effect in action. And you can see like what it's doing, like to the footage right here. It's so cool. And then for the highlights, I think this is like what we really need to control these areas. And then I can just take my blur and pull it back a little bit, nothing too crazy. And now if I do before and after, look at the difference that I'm creating in my footage. Like, look at this, like what it's doing to the edges and how believable this is. Like, look at that. Like all of this. It's absolutely incredible, okay? So we ended up with this effect. And if I do before and after, it makes, all the difference in the world. And now, because it's on a window, I can control it, right? So like we can go here and like, if we wanna kind of pull it in and just like really bring it in. If I go in my window, what happens if I make it softer? I mean, I can make it even softer. So like you can see the effect is then even more subtle. So like, look at that. And now if I just get rid of it, we go like what they're doing here, a very nice blur that they're creating. And I think I can kill the saturation. I want it at 100%. I don't want to affect my saturation. And then highlights, we brought it down. Yep. And I like that. So this is like an extremely, like I'm sold. Like I believe this effect. 
And guys, I've been using it on pretty much every single thing that I'm working on because it just adds such a little magic. Basically, it just goes in your arsenal of like all your different texture types that you would add to your footage to separate it from like the next guy. And now we're going to move on to this shot. So this is shot with the iPhone. And I did a little bit of color and then I just turned it from lock to Rec. 709. When it comes to like low light or even like just studio setup, obviously there's a lot of light. Like you can see the difference between the iPhone and an actual camera. Like, I mean, it just, it's ridiculous. Like, I mean, whether I turn this on or off. Anyways, aside from that, now we're here. What I'm going to do this time, I'm going to create another node. And in here, I'm going to go in my magic mask. And I didn't make my life easier, guys. Like, look at the type of footage that I chose, how much action is happening here. So what I want to do is I just want to create a nice bokeh in the back. Because if we go to this footage right here, we see like the blur is so nice. So we don't want to overdo it, but we want to add some depth that we don't see here. Okay. And somebody can say, well, shoot it in cinematic mode. It's not the same. It's not as clean. Like it still has like a lot of artifacting and we're not there yet. So let's use Resolve's magic mask. And let's create another stroke. Do this. Good. And let's see what kind of job it's going to do. It's grabbing everything, killing it as it usually does. Uh, we don't want to grab that. We don't want to grab this. Okay. And now I'm going to set it to better. And we're going to let it do its thing. All right. So it did a phenomenal job. Now I'm just going to go ahead and add some denoising and add some blur. And at that point, we should be ready to go. So now I'm going to go here. I'm going to drop on my defocus and I'm going to add the key detail in there. And then as soon as I do that, it's an effect, but it's too harsh. So first of all, I'm going to add the anamorphic effect because I just love it so much. And then I'm like looking at this blur, right? This is just ridiculous. So I'm going to pull it back to like something like this. Because remember, we just want to kind of do this thing right here, right? And now we're doing it. So let's go back here, maybe just a little bit more. This is not bad at all. And now if I go here, what do we want to do with the highlights? I think we can just like leave it as is. And just look at this effect that we created. And if I play it back, it's going to latch on. Like, come on. So just like that, we were able to create like such a believable, like I'm so close right now and I'm moving it back and forth and you're looking at it. So being able to like add such a sophisticated bokeh to your footage instantly and for it to latch on like that by using other powerful tools inside Resolve is just it's the ultimate game changer. This is ridiculous. This is definitely one of those tools that found a permanent home in my fixed node tree. What about you? Do you have any favorite tools or features from Resolve 19? And guys, if you enjoyed the video, then smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesomeness. I'll see you in the next video. Peace, fans.